moral, impure, or greedy person, such a man is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God, let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore do not be partakers with them. Over and over again in the Scriptures, Old and New Testament, God identifies sexual sin as a sin that eventually brings national judgment. National judgment. Now you think of the United States of America with all of our blessings, and I need to keep mentioning that. The simple fact is that we are exporters of pornography around the world. All throughout the world, there are people who are being addicted and those who produce pornography keep saying, we want younger and younger and younger men and women to become addicted. And so they're thinking of all kinds of ways now to give us pornography, not just on television, not just on movies, not just on the Internet, but in other ways as well, so that we are being bombarded by it. And God says, because of these things, the wrath of God falls on the ungodly. And isn't it providential that this morning I happened to turn on the news just to see if the world was standing. Every morning I turn on the news just to say, is the, is the world still standing? I know I am, but I'm worried about the world. And there was a report on regarding sex slavery where people go to some of the countries of the world and bring young women even here to America. And then you think of other countries that are even more gross than we are at this, and young women sold into sexual slavery. My heart just, just fell within me, and I said, Oh, God, oh, God, thank you for letting me hear about it. It is terrible, but thank you for this message, for this time that I should be reminded of the tremendously huge sins of people and nations that excel and allow, without prosecution, these terrible atrocities toward young men and young women and God. And God. Let me give you three very important conclusions. First of all, the sins of the world in our generation are also the sins of the church. Is there anything I listed here that you say, well, this is a sin of America, but it's not a sin of us, not a sin of the church? I don't think so. Name it. And we've got it. Remember that Jesus said that the church is to be in the world like a ship is in the ocean. But when the ocean gets into the ship, the ship is in trouble. And in America here, the evangelical ship is taking on water. Isn't it interesting that when Paul wrote the book of 1 Corinthians to a culture that was very immoral... You know, they prided themselves in having a thousand prostitutes up on a temple on a hill that you can still see in Corinth, the ruins of the temple, and, and uh, both male and female prostitutes. I mean, they were into immorality. Isn't it interesting that the Apostle Paul didn't say too much about the sins of the culture? The whole book of 1 Corinthians is written about the sins of the church. And what he's saying is, is that the sins of the culture have come into the sins of the church. And if you want God to bless you, you had better take care of the sins of the culture that are within the church, and then God is going to use you to transform the culture. I guess what I'm trying to say, and I hope I'm clear in saying it, is that really repentance, as the Bible says, must begin at the house of God. It has to begin here. We don't want to point too many fingers outside of ourselves without recognizing that true repentance has to begin with the best people that God's got. And that's us. I'm sorry. I, we may apologize to God and say, God, we're sorry that we're the best people that you have. But, you know, it is true. Oh, I know there are some people who are more holy than we are. There are some people who pray more than we are. I, we do. I understand that. But, but we are the redeemed ones. We are the redeemed ones. And we have the sins of the world in our churches. And that we should purge out. Yes, my friend, this is Pastor Lutzer. So often today the great emphasis is that 
we are able to win back America through the political process. Well, we've all experienced some very great disappointments in trying to do that, haven't we? And there's nothing wrong with politics, but it is not the deepest answer. It is not the answer that the church has to give to the world. What we need to do is to understand that our most precious possession is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And once we've received it, what does it say there in the book of Titus? That the grace of God which brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Would be interesting to see, wouldn't it, what God would do if our churches, and it begins with us, of course, if our churches were to deeply repent and live the way in which God intended, perhaps that way God would still save us. Thank you, Dr. Lutzer. Erwin Lutzer has given us part three of God's Judgment of the Nations, another in his six-part series on God and the Nations. Tomorrow, more sober conclusions we can take from why God judges nations and why his judgment may fall on the countries we live in. Running to Win comes to you from Chicago's Moody Church to help you understand God's roadmap for your race of life. This current series can be yours on CD, cassette, or MP3. For full information, call toll-free at 1-800-215-5001. That's 1-800-215-5001. When you call, ask about God and the nations. For information about many other ministry resources from Moody Church, visit our website at runningtowin.org. Don't forget, Running to Win is supported by listeners just like you. This is Dave McAllister. Join us tomorrow for our next Running to Win.